Welcome back, my fellow duplicants. Today I've got a quick little video, and it's based on this comment over here from Decreus over on Twitter. And he says, hey man, I love your videos. I was wondering if you could set up an automated space scanner rig that's on a door that opens once the meteor shower is over, but only after the bunker door is opened and regolith has dropped. Essentially what he's asking right here is how do you put stuff in space so that it doesn't get destroyed? I was kind of wondering that myself because if you go back to some of the earlier versions of the game, if you haven't messed with solar panels since then, those things used to give off heat. And that was like almost, uh, I can't remember when they got rid of that. But now these things here stay at 20 degrees Celsius unless you put something hot on them like this regolith, right? If you move that regolith on there, or if I can paint it on there. Here, I'll deconstruct this tile. Nope. Attempt three. There we go. Okay, so this is dropped down, and that's pretty toasty, right? So this heat from this regolith here is heating up the solar panel. So you can see that the temperature of the solar panel has gone up to the point where it's getting destroyed. So you want to protect things like this, and it's mainly from two things. You want to protect from meteorites, and you want to protect from heat. So in this arrangement, I've got a, a whole assortment of different chaos going on here. So over here, I have some solar panels. They're looking up to the sky. I have some doors, and that's on an automation signal that's coming off of my scanner system over here. And there's some things that are important when you're dealing with this. So scanner quality is essentially just how effective this machine is, and that's based on how close it is to other uh, tall structures, such as like a, a, a tile right here, a window tile would make this thing less effective so if we were to actually just dig this up real quick there we go we can see that its scanner quality is 20 percent but if i get rid of this little tile right there you can see that its scan quality has gone up to 22 percent so various equipments will uh, reduce your scan quality so you can see that the amount of tiles between this one and that one is 13 tiles between these so that makes this machine nice and effective. And then your total scanner network quality, so wherever you place these scanners across the sky up here, uh, that essentially allows you to change the automation signal that comes off of this closer to whatever event it is you're tracking. These things can track meteor showers, and they can also track rockets. I don't have a rocket set up down here because it was, it was breaking my game. You can see one of the problems if you were to just put these robo miners, which is again a new piece of equipment right next to each other, is that they could potentially get uh, covered and then broken if by heat. And that's one problem. The other thing is they could just also become too buried and nobody else is around to dig them out. So the spacing would have to be very tight. The way around this is to just create a little, you know, two tiles on top of that and then you never bury the robo miner and the robo miner can reach far enough to dig anything up here and vice versa the other thing is if this regolith is not directly on top of the equipment it's not going to transfer its heat to the equipment it's probably a good idea to make your robo miners out of steel if you can just for a little extra safety however your solar panels are only, only going to be made out of glass so you can only make so they're only going to be so resistant you have to protect them from temperature so to take the heat away from these batteries down here, my big battery pack, what I've done is I've run some liquid pipes back here. I just put a little bit of gas in there. Therefore, there's the thermal transfer that's going on there between the liquid that runs through the pipes into the gas and uh, from the batteries as well. So those things are connected. If you don't have that gas there, then it won't actually transfer the heat. So let me go ahead and just clean up this design here and actually do exactly what you requested which is a scanner system that's going to be that's going to trigger when a meteor shower is ready to drop and then it will open up and reveal the sky so that anything that needs light can get light once the meteor shower is over Rowan buddy you might want to move here we go we're going to deconstruct all of this we don't need it he's taking a bit of regolith with him just because Okay, so one important thing that you're going to really want to have is you're going to want to have a good amount of battery storage, and that's going to operate those doors. When those doors run, it's going to suck down a lot of power. So let's just make a quick little blueprint for this, right? 
Now, since you're not going to turn on and off solar panels, there's probably not a very good reason to use a smart battery. You can get more capacity for the space just using a big battery. So that's what I'm going to go with. I don't need to use anything fancy here. I'm just going to go with gold amalgam and create uh, plenty of storage right there. All right. So to run this thing, I'm going to need a couple sc space scanners. So I'm going to try to put those on an elevated pedestal so that they can actually see the sky and hopefully won't see the equipment right next to it. Let's see how this works. If I go ahead and do that, and then if I put the solar panel right next to it, I do need to give it power. So that scan quality is 34%. If I could deconstruct that real quick. Yeah. Well, it's 94 now, so let's see if we can get that a little bit higher up. 30 and 95. Deconstruct that. Scan quality 100%, so that's still working against me. I'll put the power over here. 39. Mm. Okay. So before we go and I don't know, get all ridiculous about this, Let's go ahead and just deconstruct all of this. We don't need that there. Go ahead and put the window tiles up there a little ways. Just like so. And you can see the lights right there. Okay, so my goal here is that if I cover one with some tiles, I want this one to be able to dig down on top of it. Just, just because I want to be able to put glass up there. So if I put glass above this, can this guy reach it? No, we're too far away. See so yeah, how this one can dig up here, and I can dig that up, and that one can get on top of there. Perfect. Now as far as the automation signal here, I'm just going to use a NOT gate. And we'll just go up to that, and this will go up to the bunker doors. We can kind of do this number here, just to give them some nice space or whatever. And then I want to protect everything on the inside from a meter that might be coming in at an angle. So I need to connect the automation wire to all of that. And so that the doors move quickly, I want to make sure I want to power all those doors. They will operate very, very slowly, but with power though run much faster or maybe they don't run <laughs> without power anymore scratch that there we go I'll get one of them open and that way we can start bringing in more light there we go that's what I wanted to see what happened there uh, let's give this an outside source of power okay well that nearly did not work out there just I gave it a, an outside source of power just in case the power is out Okay, so see how these doors open up here and the regolith is on top? This Robo Miner will take care of that. That also works to keep the light visible down there. So if I deconstruct this, you can see I'm getting 196, 200 and some watts out of that. And as the day goes on, this is going to get brighter and brighter. So we're up to full operation now. And these batteries are filling up with power. So the next time this thing's going to detect a meteor shower it should close the doors and then it'll protect itself and then it'll reopen up the thing you really want to be uh, careful of here is the current status so this has a maximum power usage of 1560 watts and we have a two kilowatt wire so you don't want to go beyond that so when the doors go to close or open you know you just blow up your wires that would be bad so I'm going to work on expanding the system a little bit down here so that it can do a little bit more. Actually, you know what? I forgot one thing. Is that I need to drywall in the back here. Actually, let's just kind of show you what's up with the pipes, right? So I'll do the pipes. We're bringing it in and out. So that is going to be out. This will be in. We can do gold because we're fancy. 
All right, so let's just take a look at the temperature here. You can see the batteries are quite hot, and you can see now the liquid is passing behind them, and guess what? The temperature is still going up because it's not transferring uh, from one to the other. Now, because people are going to ask, what happens if you put a temperature shift plate back there? See that? The battery is still the same temperature. So, on the back wall, what you want to do is you want to fill it in with the drywall. So you kind of put that stuff in there. And now we can hold a gas inside of here. And that works as the transfer method in this case. So really, good, whatever gas, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, you're not putting off a lot of heat, you know. So it's not a big deal. We'll just do some oxygen gas inside of there. And now watch. That temperature is dropping and it's dropping rapidly. So that's how you keep your batteries from overheating. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this arrangement here to the left. We're going to add another space scanner arrangement. And we're also going to add more solar panels and do some other things that have to look into space. Actually, scanner quality is 46. If I deconstruct that or deconstruct this, ooh. Ooh, I get a much better scan quality if I actually don't have a vertical door there. So it's worthwhile to do this like that. And then because I can reach on top of that door, there's no reason to put a vertical door there. You're not going to get a meter in at that angle. And then a meter comes in at that angle. <laughs> So I should be able to support three space scanners off of two solar panels. So I'm going to put that way over there. And that should be good. You can do some math to figure out how much storage you really need. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, though. If you're talking about how much these bunker doors will consume when they run. The thing you want to, again, pay attention to is that maximum number right there. And I'm pretty much... You can see that's 1920 watts a little bit a little bit too much so one thing you could do to manage your power when you get up here is if we expand this ever so slightly you can put one of these small power transformers in here and then rather than running your conductive wire up there you could just run your normal kind of standard cheap wire you pretty much run all of this low power equipment off of it. So then just run the doors off of the big wire and then run the equipment up here off of the light wire. So, like that. This gives me a better scan network quality. So now I can detect 87 seconds out, which is pretty good. This also gives me space to put down quite a few more um, solar panels. And I can pack these closer than what I have right here. So I can get more out of the space I have. So for solar panels, we could just bam, bam. Of course, I might want to keep that last one open. Just kind of connect these two like this. And then just use this to go and run into your base or something like that. There's a lot of different ways that we can work with power. I'm not going to go into all of that. You can detect when the battery is full and, and then dump some of that charge out. Although, you really want to make sure you have enough power to keep this system this up and running. So, considering how hands-off crap solar power is, unless you accidentally delete it, it may not be worth all that trouble. So one of the other equipments you're going to use is for research. It is a station, the telescope. Reduce visibility, scan radius, five cells. Okay, let's, let's move that. All right, so there's the full arrangement. I have a bunch of doors up there, up there. Some things guarding this side. Not a lot guarding that side. I'm, that might be slightly exposed. Buzz Lightyear is up here scanning some stuff. Very nice of him to do that. And these solar panels are solar paneling. 
batteries are at full this entire time and I'm running three scanners plus a telescope. I say this was a quick video. It's never a quick video. I jinx myself every time I say that. Yeah, it's gonna take about five minutes. 50 minutes later, it's one o'clock. Hmm, let's just take a look at the reports. How much power did I generate yesterday from solar panels? Ooh, 617 kilojoules. That's pretty good. And you could pretty much just build that all the way across the top of the map. Makes me wonder just how much power there is up there. Can figure that out. Why is this map so narrow? Hmm. Maybe it isn't all that narrow. We're currently researching this out here. Hmm. I wonder what's there. Ah, crap. Sunburn. Well, that seems counterintuitive. The dude's got a space helmet on underneath an exosuit helmet inside of a telescope. How does he get sunburn in there? Hmm? Anybody want to explain that one? Ooh, 752 kilojoules from the solar panels the day before. Man, that's really useful. Oh! Okay, so we've just detected incoming objects. You can see how long it takes the doors to close. They're officially closed. The solar panels are no longer generating power. Trivaldo's quite confused. He's just like beating on the telescope. It would actually be in his best interest to connect the automation wire. There you go, Trivaldo. I've helped you think through your... Man, what'd you do? Why'd you have to clean that? Trovalin, you're so dirty. Okay, so this is currently using 360 watts. You can see how that's still running, even though this one is off over there, right? So I think to just automatically turn these off, I can just put an automation wire on them. Well, no, because that was part of your, your request, right? Because they don't want to turn on while the thing is incoming. I got rid of the wrong things. So to save a little bit of power, what you use is a power shutoff right here. Okay, so then we take the automation wire that we use to run the doors to the power shutoff and then run the power wire through that power shutoff. So like this. So that powers down all but the one scanner that we need in order to keep this signal the way it is. And just because I want to have some fun here, let's throw some meters at this. Get some rock comets, get some dust comets in there. It's going to make for a good image. Iron comets. Yeah! And you hit play, and you go back like this. And then you pause the game a little bit. Yeah! And that is when you take your image. Yeah! <laughs> All right, so any moment now, this meteor shower should be stopping, maybe. It's kind of a long one, actually. And there we go. So now that has turned off. We've flipped the switch there, so now the doors are going to open up. And now these robo miners are going to have to clear all this regolith that has dropped down. Now, if we had auto sweepers down here too, we could also do that to kind of pick some of this stuff up and automatically deliver it. But you can see how that's worked. Doo doo! And it's all cleaned up. So now some dupes will run up here and just sweep it up. So there you have it, Dragus. One system that looks into space with scanners and telescopes and solar panels. And I think it does everything you were looking for there. Alrighty, well I think that video was quite helpful for me at least. So hopefully it was helpful for you as well. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome for supporting me with your money. And for everyone here that's viewing this, supporting me with your views. So thank you so much for that. A lot of big things that are coming up here for the year of 2019. Look forward to sharing a lot more Oxygen Not Included with you and some more fancy stuff in the future. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar.
out.